Hello, my name is John Bestley and I'm a reader in the Anglican Church based in Walkington and the surrounding villages. I sometimes take services in the Methodist Church in Walkington. I'm very pleased to be with you today on this third Sunday of Advent. Jesus said, no one more important than John the Baptist has ever been born, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Amen. Come soon, Lord Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world, a light no darkness can ever put out. Amen. Let us start with some words of scripture from Paul's letters to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the word of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good and abstain from every form of evil. Traditionally, the third Sunday in Advent is associated with the theme of joy. But I'm actually going to use last week's theme, the theme of hope today, which John Turner did when he preached on hope. I'm in good company because the week before, Leslie Newton used as part of his texts a prayer which had the words wild in hope in it. And so for our prayer for lighting the candle, I'm going to use the same prayer that John used last week which has the words, hope of the ages. O holy child Emmanuel, hope of the ages, God with us. Visit again this broken place till all the earth declares your praise and your great mercies own. Now let your love be born in us. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. We turn now to confession. Almighty God, patient and of great goodness, I confess to you, I confess with my whole heart, my neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, my wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts I've done to others, the good I've left undone. 
O God, forgive me, for I have sinned against you, and raise me to newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And we now turn to our reading, which comes from John's Gospel. The Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 1, verses 6 to 8 and 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptising if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptise with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptising. Amen. Waiting in expectation. Waiting as a witness. What can John the Baptist teach us, the church today, to witness to Christ? In this pandemic, in this time of waiting, we are indeed waiting. Waiting for Christmas, yes, but waiting for more than that. Waiting for that hope of being freed from the bondage of the restrictions put around us to keep us safe. Those restrictions affect our freedom, our social life, our family life, our ability to worship together. And for many people, those restrictions are affecting their very livelihoods. And so we're waiting and waiting in hope. Now I suspect that for many of you, like me, there's a sense that we're relatively fortunate that I've been inconvenienced by the pandemic, but it's not affected me personally very much. I've not lost anybody and it's not affected my livelihood. There are many who have been far more adversely affected. I think of a friend who has gone into residential care in the last few months and she's had to be socially isolated. And then of course, with the considerable restrictions on visiting her, which has added to her bewilderment and her distress. Waiting in expectation, waiting as a witness. So let's return to John the Baptist. He lived in extraordinary times. Roman occupation put many restrictions on the people they occupied. And we can see how much there was rough justice, not only with the crucifixion of Jesus, but the way that Paul was treated, being flogged and being put into prison. And also, we can look at the restrictions the Jews themselves put on each other. We think particularly about the Sabbath restrictions, 
but think about the woman taken in adultery and think about Stephen being stoned for blasphemy. So we've always had restrictions. Some restrictions have been much harsher than others. And perhaps we in the 21st century in the West are not used to restrictions as people have been in other parts of the world and in the past. So John the Baptist. The Jews were longing for a Messiah to rescue them from the occupation of Rome. And was John the Baptist their man? Was he that Messiah, a prophet or Elijah? But no, his answer was this. I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah says. Make straight the way of the Lord. Now, it's obvious that John was not referring to the pandemic and the vaccine. But I wonder if there's a message for us here today in Beverly in the 21st century. Make straight the way of the Lord. The world has come together in a quite extraordinary way to make this vaccine. Something that would normally have taken nine years at least, if not longer, has taken nine months. Medics, scientists, virologists, biochemists, engineers, even financiers, governments, the whole international community has come together to produce this medical miracle, this vaccine. And John the Baptist would most certainly have seen it as being a miracle. Imagine giving a small injection you couldn't even see and that would stop you getting an illness. The vaccine is indeed a medical miracle. And so perhaps we can see in that vaccine, in that medical miracle, nature and mankind working together for our common good. Perhaps in some way that is making straight the way of the Lord. We have turned the corner and now we can make straight. Waiting in anticipation, waiting as a witness. So what do we, as a Christian community, as the church, witness to do, witness now, like John the Baptist, to the coming of Christ? What is it that we are pointing to? Now for some, it will be the story of individual salvation, and that's a large part of people's thinking. But perhaps there's a wider way of seeing things, a way that might be of help to those people who are outside the church. And that is that we can wait in hope. Waiting in hope is what we can display to the world. Waiting well, not like John the Baptist eating locusts and living in camel hair gowns, but waiting well, waiting patiently, but also waiting self-sacrificially. Perhaps we have an example to set over this Christmas period of not exploiting the freedoms we're given to their maximum, but to say, let others do that. We will wait patiently in anticipation and we will sacrifice ourselves in that way. Just as our Lord came and sacrificed himself, perhaps we can join in that with that self-sacrifice. So... We are waiting in anticipation, waiting as a witness, but above all, we're waiting in hope. Amen.
And so we turn to our prayers. We start with the collect for today for John the Baptist. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for your son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our prayers continue with the, and we use the response, kindle hope in our hearts, Lord. Kindle hope in our hearts, Lord. We pray for the world. We give thanks for the great hope of the vaccine as people are starting to be injected this week. We pray for the most vulnerable. We pray for those parts of the world waiting in hope for vaccines in the future. We pray for wisdom of world leaders to ensure that it is adequately distributed. Kindle hope in our hearts, Lord. We pray for your church and the opportunity of witness in this time of pandemic. We pray for hope for ourselves. And so we say, kindle hope in our hearts, Lord. And we pray for individuals, for the bereaved, the lonely, those facing financial worries. And we say, kindle hope in our hearts, Lord. And we conclude by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now for our blessing. I started our worship with lighting the Advent candle and some words from Paul to the Thessalonians. So I continue that reading for our blessing. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus. 
the one who sent you is faithful and this he will do and the blessing that god the father god the son and god the holy spirit be upon us all now and for always amen <laughs>